earwax. Just hearing the word probably made you slightly uncomfortable. And that's exactly why we're talking about it. Everyone has it. Nobody likes admitting it. And yet your body keeps producing it nonstop, like it knows something you don't. Is earwax just dirt your ears forgot to throw away? Or is it actually doing something important behind the scenes? Today, we're peeling back the mystery on one of the most misunderstood substances your body makes and answering the oddly fascinating question, what exactly is earwax, right here on History of Simple Things. Earwax, also known by its scientific name cerumen, is a natural substance produced by your body. It's not dirt, it's not leftover shampoo, and it's definitely not a sign of bad hygiene. Earwax is created inside the ear canal by two types of glands, sebaceous glands, which produce oil, and ceruminous glands, which produce a thicker, sweat-like fluid. When these secretions mix with dead skin cells that naturally shed inside your ear, you get earwax. That sticky yellowish substance is basically a custom-made ear protection formula, designed by your body, for your body. And yes, it's supposed to be there. In fact, earwax is one of the few substances your body makes specifically to stay on the surface rather than be absorbed or flushed away which should already tell you it has an important job to do. Your ears are constantly exposed to the outside world. Dust, bacteria, pollen, tiny insects. Your ear canal is basically an open door. Earwax acts as a first line of defense. Its sticky texture traps debris before it can travel deeper toward your eardrum. But that's not all. Earwax also has antibacterial and antifungal properties which help prevent infections. On top of that, it keeps your ear canal slightly moisturized, preventing dryness, itching, and irritation. Without earwax, your ears would actually be more vulnerable and uncomfortable. So despite its bad reputation, earwax is doing a lot of behind-the-scenes work to keep your ears safe. Let's address the elephant in the room. Earwax doesn't exactly look appealing, and sometimes it has a noticeable smell. That's not a design flaw, it's part of its function. The color of earwax can range from pale yellow to dark brown, depending on age, exposure, and how long it's been sitting in the ear. Fresh earwax is usually lighter and softer. Older earwax darkens as it collects debris and oxidizes over time. As for the smell, earwax contains fatty acids and alcohols that give it that distinct odor. These compounds actually help repel insects, which is useful when your ears are literally holes in your head. Not pleasant for us, but extremely practical from a survival standpoint. Here's a fun fact that sounds fake, but isn't. Earwax type is genetic. Some people have wet, sticky earwax while others have dry, flaky earwax. This difference is controlled by a single gene, and it's linked to ancestry. Wet earwax is more common in people of African and European descent, while dry earwax is more common in East Asian populations. Neither type is better or cleaner. They just work slightly differently. Wet earwax tends to trap debris more effectively, while dry earwax flakes out of the ear more easily. Different strategies, same goal, protecting your ears. One of the most misunderstood things about earwax is that you're not supposed to remove most of it. Your ears are actually self-cleaning. As you talk, chew, and move your jaw, the ear canal slowly shifts earwax outward. Once it reaches the opening of the ear, it dries up and falls out on its own. This process happens constantly, without you ever noticing, which means that sticking objects into your ear, cotton swabs, hairpins, tissue paper, isn't helping. 
In many cases, it pushes earwax deeper, packing it closer to the eardrum and increasing the risk of blockage. Even though earwax is helpful, too much of it can cause issues. This condition is known as earwax impaction. It happens when earwax builds up faster than it can naturally exit the ear. Symptoms can include muffled hearing, ear pain, ringing in the ears, dizziness, or a feeling of fullness. Sometimes people think they're going deaf, when really there's just a stubborn wax plug blocking sound. Ironically, one of the biggest causes of earwax impaction is overcleaning. Using cotton swabs regularly can push wax deeper and compress it, making it harder to remove naturally. Cotton swabs are marketed as ear cleaning tools, but most medical professionals strongly advise against using them inside the ear canal. The phrase you'll often hear is, don't put anything smaller than your elbow in your ear. Cotton swabs don't remove earwax, they rearrange it. They scrape the surface, push wax inward, and increase the risk of irritation, infection, or even eardrum damage. In severe cases, people have perforated their eardrums just trying to clean their ears. So if cotton swabs are out, what should you do? For most people, the best solution is simple. Do nothing. Let your ears do their job. If you notice wax at the opening of the ear, gently wiping the outside with a damp cloth is enough. If earwax buildup becomes uncomfortable or affects hearing, that's when medical treatment comes in. Doctors may use ear drops to soften the wax, irrigation with warm water, or specialized tools to remove it safely. These methods are controlled, gentle, and far less risky than DIY solutions. And no, ear candling does not work. It's ineffective and potentially dangerous. Not everyone produces earwax at the same rate. Factors like age, ear canal shape, skin conditions, use of earbuds or hearing aids, and even stress can influence how much earwax you make. As people age, earwax tends to become drier and harder, which can increase the chance of impaction. Wearing earbuds frequently can also block natural wax movement, trapping it inside. Again, this isn't a cleanliness issue. It's just biology doing what biology does. So, is earwax gross? From a social perspective, maybe. From a biological perspective, absolutely not. Earwax is a smart, multitasking substance that protects, cleans, lubricates, and defends one of your most sensitive organs. It's proof that your body is constantly working behind the scenes, even in ways you never asked for. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.